Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, your one-stop shop for mature dialogue. We're going to get right to it. Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, your one-stop shop for mature sports dialogue. I am your host, Earl Tima. Riding solo today, the Big Unk Allen team will be back next episode. But before we go any further, I need you all out there to like the video, leave some comments below, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, hit the notification bell. That way you know Dream Team is when we upload new content, all right? We're getting right to it. Happy Saturday, ladies and gentlemen, and we know what that means. That is our weekly Utah Jazz update. But before I even state how I feel, give analysis, state opinions, or even give facts, I'm going to read a quote from the center, all-star center of the Utah Jazz, Rudy Gobert, that he made after a loss to the Washington Wizards. Rudy Gobert stated, we have to realize we have an accomplished ish. We get upset when people laugh at us on TV and disrespect us, but it's on us to have respect for ourselves and understand that we're not the champions. We are not a team that can just cruise. Does that sound familiar? We spoke about that very attitude last week here on Team Sports Entertainment and our weekly jazz update. We felt as though the Utah Jazz were becoming too emotional. They were thinking about things that were out of their control. When, when they were selected in the All-Star game, the refs wearing t-shirts with NBA Jam uh, animations on it, trying to get back at other individuals who said they didn't play with them in video games, things that, things that just don't matter, all right? And Rudy Gobert comes right back less than probably a week later and expounds on all of those things. And it's showing because if you look at their last 10 games, they're not playing like themselves. It's 500 basketball. Last 10 games, 5-5. Five and five. And since the All-Star break, they've played Houston, which they've won. They, beat the, they lost to the Warriors. They beat the Celtics. Lost to the Wizards. And last night, they beat the Raptors. That's a record of 3-2. and two, A little over 500. And they're, um, it almost seems as though they're uncomfortable. They're not used to being hunted. And in the second half of the season, teams are making adjustments. The defensive intensity picks up. And to Utah's credit, they're winning the games. It doesn't matter how you win, right? Because ultimately, a win is a win, right? But they've become too accustomed to re relying on a three-point shot. Now, we all know the old saying, if you live by the three... You die by the three, right? They lead the league in three-point shooting, but it seems as though nothing comes easy. They're ranked number 24th in the league in points in the paint. How was that? You have a bona fide seven-footer who has some athletic ability. I think he should average a little bit more than 13 points. Now, I'm not asking him to be a Kim Elijah one, but in the playoffs, uh, making those adjustments or having that option can be the difference between going home in the second round or going to the finals all right like i said before everything seems as though it's set up for a three-point shot and when a three-point shot isn't falling things get a little tight uh since the all-star break it's almost as if utah also has uh an issue with uh creating separation early in the season they would have those spurts and quarters like maybe the second and third quarter where they were outscored team by maybe 15 to 18 points now it seems as though they're playing from behind. And like we stated, things do get harder as the season goes on. But you also have to make adjustments as well. Just last night, watching them play against the Raptors, defensively, what's going on? Is I'm, I believe that Utah needs another wing defender. Royce O'Neal is solid. He's done his job. You can't ask him to do more than what he's already done. But the way the opposing teams, uh, perimeter players, are able to get to the lane now, Fred Van Fleet, he missed quite a few layups last night, but he was able to get in the lane. All right? I think they need to really make a move before the tread, day, tread de deadline, sorry, and uh, probably try to plug in the piece there. I don't know what's available or even if they may be apprehensive because, you know, you don't want to play around with the team chemistry. You've come this far. But... They may need a spark because in the playoffs, you're going to have to play some defense. It's going to be nice when that three-point shot isn't falling and you may have to eke out some nasty wins. And it's going to start on the perimeter because out west, there's a lot of uh, exciting guards out there with high IQs and 
they can make things happen. And if you don't have the bona fide defenders out there, you can lose uh, some games that you could possibly have won. But all in all, Utah is still in first place, two games ahead of Los Angeles Lakers. But a lot of teams are starting to hit their stride. And it's time for Utah to probably hit that second gear if they have it. If you watch them play, they have the talent to make it happen. There's no doubt about it. But it's almost as if they've become so enamored with things that are happening off the floor or things that are out of their control that they allow those things to alter their rhythm. And it's showing. It's showing big time. Getting out hustled. Like it's a weird experience. Like it's hard to judge whether or not they're struggling or the competition has just gotten better. But as a championship team, you have to figure it out. But one thing is for sure, they need an additional wing defender. If they don't get that, it it could be some uh, trouble going forward. Not to say that they can't, you know, somehow find that team chemistry and, and push forward with the team that they have because they've proven that they can ball. But to make their lives much easier, I think that they need to get an additional, def- uh, an additional defender. Continue to shoot the three. There's nothing wrong with that. Wide open threes. But you need to learn or find ways to get easy baskets. Because rank, being ranked number 24 in the NBA and points in the paint when you have a, uh, a seven-footer who on the break could possibly run down, duck down, and, and get easy buckets. He gets to lob ever so often, but I think that if he just averages maybe increases points per game maybe by five or six points, that can make a world of difference. But you're still ranked number one in the West. Uh, last night against Toronto, you were able to, uh, you know, come back and win that game. Because you have a star player such as Donovan Mitchell Who was able to hit some timely buckets But that shouldn't have been a game at all If the perimeter defense was solid Toronto could have been out of that game early And even if you look at the last possession Which proves my point Siakam was able to get wide open for an open three That went in and out Because you need an additional wing defender All right that's about all I have. You're still number one. Don't in, in the not just the Western Conference. I stand corrected. Like my uncle would say, you're number one in the NBA as far as record goes. But you have other teams who are starting to hit their stride. Lakers are hot. Phoenix are pretty hot right now. And those uh the spacing that you had or the difference between the loss and the wins has now decreased down to two games. So the Utah Jazz are pretty much um, They don't have any much wiggle room. They have to get it together and figure out what is needed and implement that ASAP. And uh, if they do, they can get right back on track and continue their winning ways. But we shall see, right? That's what makes the NBA so interesting, man. Utah Jazz Weekly Update. This is what we do here. That's all I have to say concerning that at Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Leave a comment below. What do you think about the Utah Jazz play as of late? Are you satisfied? Do you feel as though they have too many distractions or they're worried about the wrong things? And also leave a comment concerning uh, my, my point that I believe that they should get a little bit more points in the paint. Or even if that's possible. What do you think about that? All right. Once again, my name is Earl Teamer. I'm your host of Team Sports Entertainment. My co-host Al Teamer will be back next episode. I promise. Y'all be good out there. This is the Utah Jazz Weekly Update here at Team Sports Entertainment. Enjoy your weekend.